Hello, and welcome to your February Investor Update. I'm James McManus, Chief Investment Officer at Nutmeg. This month, I'll be reviewing January's market performance and diving into recent developments in China as we enter the Year of the Dragon on the 10th of February. US equities powered to an all-time high in January. What was behind this and how did other markets fare? Well, the S&P 500, the core benchmark for US equities, ended the month returning 1.7% on the back of a continuation of better than expected US economic data. Now, the potential for the US economy to maintain a stronger economic footing than many of its developed market peers in 2024 is a key part of its appeal uh, for us at Nutmeg. And US GDP data released in January for the final three months of 2023 showed the economy was much more resilient than expected. US growth for the quarter registered 3.3% on an annualized basis. That's 1.3% higher than market expectations. And importantly, both consumer spending and labor markets remained in good health, which was also reflected in the IMS January growth upgrade for the US economy in 2024. Elsewhere, Japanese equity markets led returns in the developed markets, up 8.5% in local currency terms, while UK equities lagged behind their global counterparts, the FTSE 100 returning negative 1.3% as key materials and financial sector stocks underperformed. In Europe, despite a more challenging economic picture, the broader stock market delivered gains of 2.2%, driven in part by strong performance from stock market darlings, the semiconductor supplier ASML, and Danish pharmaceutical firm Novo Nordisk. February sees Lunar New Year and the Year of the Dragon. What does Nutmeg's current view on China? Well, from a macro perspective, it's challenging to have a positive view on China at the moment. The real estate sector, which was for years a driver of growth in the country, continues to experience a significant reversal. And fragility in that sector continues to feed through into wider economic momentum. Evergrande, which was up until recently one of the largest property developers in the country, was placed into liquidation in January, a sign of the challenges faced by those who previously benefited from China's property boom. But China's woes unfortunately extend far further than just the real estate sector. Over the past five years, investors have faced a steady stream of headwinds and risks to Chinese growth. Alongside that decline in the real estate sector, there's been the consolidation of power of a president who has reasserted Communist Party power in the economy. The increasingly fractious relationships with its largest trading partners, economically damaging extended COVID policies, and of course, a regulatory crackdown on leading technology companies. And those issues have combined to undermine confidence of global investors. Now, political risk of particular has become elevated with authorities' regular interventions motivated more by political objectives rather than rational, at least to Western investors' economic outcomes. Now, China's recovery in 2024 partly depends on whether authorities de decide to stimulate the economy and to what extent that happens. Stimulus has been hotly anticipated, but recent announcements have seen only minor tweaks with minimal impacts for the broader economy. Given the negative outlook on China, how is Nutmeg currently positioned? Chinese equities form part of our emerging markets exposure, but within emerging markets, China's relative share is actually much lower today than it has been at any time in the past five years. Now at their peak in 2020, Chinese markets accounted for over 40% of emerging market stocks by weight. But today is an illustration of how China's appeal has cooled for investors in the post-COVID period. That share has fallen to just 25%. Now, away from domestic growth challenges, Chinese growth has also been significantly impacted by the lull in global manufacturing and goods demand over the previous 18 months. China remains one of the world's largest economies and a major participant in global manufacturing and trade. But world trade volumes continue to be depressed in the aftermath of the goods boom that was witnessed during the COVID period. Manufacturing, which is approximately a third of China's GDP and highly scrutinized by foreign economists, has shown early signs of a rebound. However, for that to continue, there will be a heavy reliance upon the strength of Western consumers and their governments with whom relationships, especially the US, have been challenging. But with US growth and Western consumption remaining stronger than expected, and both goods demand and investment cycles showing tentative signs of normalization, we think there's room for an improvement in the trade picture through 2024. That view is also matched by the IMF, which expects global trade to grow 3.3% in 2024. While that's by no means runaway growth and is actually below historical averages, a return to positive global trade growth and the continued strength of economies such as India means there is room for optimism 
when it comes to emerging market performance through 2024. As always, thanks for watching. We'll continue to keep you updated via our regular blogs, our monthly investor update, as well as our view from the investment desk videos. If you have any questions or suggestions for a topic you'd like us to discuss in next month's investor update, you can contact us via social media, email, or in the comments section below this video.